Okay folks, so the last time I uh, left you I primed the model overall with uh, Tamiya Surface Primer. In the intervening time I have leapt forward a, a few steps which I'll cover with you just briefly here. What I've done is I've, um, I've used uh, various Mr. Colour metallic colours to, um, to do the metal areas at the rear and the intake, uh, sorry, the engine tunnels. Okay, uh, the metal area on around the cannon muzzle. Uh, I've also sprayed the white areas on the fin tips, the starboard fin and the nose. They will be masked off, uh, ready for the top coat. Um, and so we're ready with the top coat. <clears throat> now one thing I did, did do with this is um, I, I went over, after masking off these areas that I've painted, you obviously yours end up with a bit of overspray. And what I tend to find with overspray is that even when I'm using a good good quality lacquer paint with good uh, pigment density like Mr. Colour here, you are applying multiple coats over a model, um, over those areas specifically to cover up the uh, overspray zone. Um, <clears throat> so what I've done with this, model is after masking, I've uh, got some Tamiya Surface Primer, I've decanted it into my airbrush and I've just given a quick blast of primer over those overspray zones just to make the model completely uniform in colour once again. What that means is I'm not trying to cover any um, any overspray, um, it's almost like trying to cover up pre-shading, you know as pre-shading shows through, so does overspray if it's uh, too different to the base colour. So um, I've given it a little, little light coat of primer over those overspray zones <coughs> just to render it one colour again, that means I have to use relatively less of the the, um, of the, the base coat colour to, to get a good finish. Um, now onto colours, um, I've been looking at colours all week and I'm doing one of the more recent flanker schemes, sea flanker schemes, and I have to say um, I'm looking at photographs and comparing it to the Mr. Colour references, I, I, I don't think the references in the kit are that far off. I have sprayed the tail planes here um, with uh, the uh, stated uh, colour in the instructions which is uh, 115, Mr. Colour 115, which is RLM 65, which is Luftwaffe light blue. And I have to say, once it's dry, it doesn't look that far off um, to me from uh, looking at it compared to uh, photographs of the real aircraft. So for the base coat, that's the colour I'm going to use. So I'm just going to give that a, a shake. I've added a good dollop previously of uh, Mr. Colour Thin to this pot. Um, it's the beautiful thing about these uh, Mr. Colour lacquer paints is that if the pots dry out, it's not like an enamel or anything like that where if the pot dries out the paint is ruined. If a pot of um, Mr. Colour dries out, you add some uh, Mr. Colour levelling thinner, some of this stuff, uh, give, it a, uh, give it a squirt, give it a stir and uh, it will rejuvenate the paint no problem whatsoever. So there we are, ready to go. Okay, so for this one, <clears throat> for the base coat of this model, I'm going to be using my Iwata uh, TR1, the uh, trigger action airbrush. Uh, I'm just looking for something to, uh, once again, poke up the rear of my flanker, so to speak. And that gives me a little handhold to, uh, to hold the model while I'm, while I'm spraying it. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just going to flick my air compressor on, pick a brush, just, just give that a, a good stir. <clears throat> I'm just going to add a, uh, a Some thinner, some that's Mr. Color leveling thinner, and then I'm just going to pour a good proportion of um, the uh, RLM 65 in, give it a stir to mix it up. Just going to check over here for. Paint flow. I think that probably could do with a little hit more of thinner in it. Just going to give it a quick back flush to uh, yeah, happy with that. 
So let's have a look how it's going to spray. Um, I've got a few bits like the undercarriage doors I've, I've removed and removed all the um, things like the uh, tabs and stuff from, so they're ready to spray as well. So. You can see you now that's um, over the primer there, that's that thoroughly coated. Again, it's the work of seconds. I'm just going to turn the pressure up a tiny little bit. And the good thing about things like Mr. Colour Paint is that it does dry in literally minutes. And I'll just demonstrate that by that's been painted now with a coat. I'm just cutting to air to, uh, to dry that off. And that's dry. I can touch that. That's, uh, that's actually touched dry in, what, 10 or 15 seconds from spraying. Okay, so we're moving on to actually painting the main airframe, and uh, I'm going to start with the underside. And it's a case of just opening the airbrush up quite wide, making sure the model gets a good coat in all areas. And that is that wing done. So I'm going to continue with uh, spraying the top coat on this flanker. So I'll uh, get back to you when that's done. Okay, so there's the um, there's the base coat uh, of pale blue done. What I want to do is give a a little uh, weathering effect to that um, to that blue. Uh, so I'm just going to bring over some of the other, here's one I prepared earlier, type items like the canards and the, uh, the tail planes because they're going to need a little bit of um, weathering as well. I'll just clamp them in uh, suitable tweezers. Now I've switched back to the, uh, the Iwata HPC Plus. Uh, part of the reason I've done that, if I'm completely honest, is that I'm having trouble with the. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the uh, air supply on the uh, Revolution at the moment. There's uh, something going on in there that needs to be uh, sorted, so I'm switching back partially for that, and partially because I just want a finer airbrush for the next step, which is uh, to do a little bit of weathering um, to the base blue. It's a really simple technique I'm going to be using. Um, again, I'm just going to give a. Uh, I'm going to be using quite highly thinned paint. That flows good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few brushfuls of the. RLM 65 blue and then I'm going to lighten it with some uh, gloss gloss white this is a very thin mixture it's probably 80-85% uh, thinner ok so let's see if I can bring them in a little bit closer for this so I'm just going to see, right I've got a good flow already so what I'm doing is just doing a light cloud pattern you 
Yeah, the trick here is to keep it as random as you possibly can, okay? So the first thing I'm doing is just going in a wavy line, turn it 90 degrees and do the same again. That is all I want to do to that really. Um, it gives a very light um, uh, cloudy pattern to the blue which I uh, quite like the effect of. The repainted and, and sort of um, slightly upgraded sea flankers uh, so far are quite clean so I don't want to overdo the weathering. Some of the earlier uh, ones before they went in for refit and repaint were uh, really quite uh, disgracefully weathered. Um, but the new ones are, or um, well, the newly refurbished ones, are nowhere near as bad. So. And then it's picking out one or two of the panels and uh, giving them a, a little bit of a uh, spray over as well. And then it's just doing that with over the entire model to start with as the, as the first kind of uh, step to weathering your, uh, your colour scheme. That's it, and then it's just working over the entire model in the initial blue. Now the trick is to be really quite random with this. Um, I, I tend to do it by panels and keeping within the panels, but not along panel lines or anything like that. It's um, the random nature of it is the uh, strength of this of this kind of weathering. And the thing is, it's it, it's really very subtle on this um, in this particular instance. You almost have to catch the light on the paint to see where I've weathered it, which is pretty much the effect I'm looking for, given the uh, fairly clean nature of these aircraft. If you're doing one of the, uh, and I find as I'm building that up, it's it's starting to uh, show up more and more as I build that pattern up. Um, still the uh, the emphasis is definitely on keeping it subtle I'm not a big fan of pre-shading I do use it from time to time but in um, quite specific ways, it, it's not, um, I, I don't do the uh, whole panel line pre-shading thing, uh, some people do, some people like it, that's fine, I've never liked the effect it's given, and on the occasions I do use it, I use it in a far more selective way. This is just the method that works for me, so I'm sure. Okay, so that's given the entire model um, a light coating of uh, a kind of cloud pattern of a pale colour. Now what I'm going to do now is get rid of the paint that's in the cup here. Just 
clean the cut through, it doesn't have to be too thoroughly clean because there's more blue going in any second. And now I want to do the uh, the, the same thing, but um, if <laughs> if possible, even in an even more subtle manner, with slightly darkening the uh, the paint down. So once again, a good hit of uh, thinner into my uh, into my airbrush. Uh, a couple of uh, brush rolls of the light colour, okay, and then what I'm adding is um, a a brushful or two of a darker blue colour, and that's really taking it to a darker colour already with one brushful into the thinner. So I'm just going to check again that. Now I'm going to limit the darker shading to the top side of the model, I'm not going to do any, do any on the underside. Yeah, that's fine. I don't want to uh, overdo this at all if I can help it, so... with the darker shade definitely less is more with the darker shade okay so be very very gentle with the dark shade because it will um, And that's it for the darker blue really, I've, um, it's a very subtle pattern, I don't want to overdo it um, because that will completely ruin it. In fact, to be honest with you, I've already overdone it a little bit on these tail planes, uh, which is no worry with this, uh, this technique because all I'm going to do is clean out the airbrush.
Okay, wait until uh, give it a, a good a good clean out. I've also noticed one or two little areas uh, of the original the base coat that I've uh, missed on the model, so it gives me an opportunity to go back and do those. So all I'm going to do is go back to my base blue, get it coming through the airbrush. And that's done. That's uh, that's just toned the darker blue that I didn't like the effect of back. Fine, that very light mist coat. It's still weathered. It's still looking good, uh, but it's just not quite as obtrusive as it was 20 seconds ago. So I've noticed that on the on the tail stinger here, because of the way I was holding the model, uh, some of the blue hasn't got there so I'm just going to correct that now I'm just checking over the model for areas where I think the dark the darker blue cloud pattern might be a little bit obtrusive there's one or two areas and the good thing is that doing this just gives you an even cloudier looking pattern which is uh, not necessarily a bad thing. Anyway, there's the base coat done. So what we're going to cover um, next with this model is applying the uh, the actual camouflage pattern. So uh, stay tuned and I'll be back uh, shortly when this is dried because it dries very very quickly these Mr. Colours. Uh, probably within the next hour or so I'll be back to um, talk to you about applying the camouflage and show you how I'm going to go about it.